today's class is about peripheral nerve injuries objectives relevant anatomy pathology mechanism of injury classification diagnosis treatment and prognosis anatomy structure of the nerve peripheral nerve consists of masses of axis cylinders nothing but axons each with a neurolemmal tube the individual nerve is enclosed in a collagen connective tissue which is known as endoneurium the bundle of nerve fibers bonded by fibrous tissue to form fasciculus the binding fibrous tissue is known as perineurium a number of fasciculi bound together by fibrous sheath known as epineurium as we can as we can see in the picture a nerve fiber is bounded by a collagen connective tissue which is known as endoneurium as you can see that this is the endoneurium then the bundle of such nerve fibers are further bonded together by fibrous tissue to form a fasciculus the binding fibrous tissue is known as perineurium so the nerve fibers are surrounded by collagen fibrous tissue uh, uh, collagen connective tissue known as endoneurium and the bundle of such nerve fibers is further bonded together by fibrous tissue known as perineurium to form the fasciculus then number of fasciculi are bound together by fibrous tissue sheath is known as epineurium then formation of a peripheral nerve these are formed from the spinal nerves either through direct branching or through networks known as plexus the peripheral nerves are mixed nerves carrying motor sensory and autonomous supply to the limbs spinal nerves is formed from the spinal nerves that is the 31 pairs of spinal nerves in the body each represents a segment of the spinal cord this either forms spinal nerves either through direct branching or network plexus the peripheral nerves are mixed nerves carrying motor sensory and autonomous supply to the limbs anatomical features relevant to nerve injuries relation to surface the superficially placed nerves are more prone to injury by external objects example the median nerves are at the wrist often gets cut by a piece of glass then relation to the bone nerves in close proximity to a bone or a joint are more prone to injury example radial nerve injury in a fracture of the shaft of the humerus and relation to the fibrous septae some nerves pierce fibrous septae along their course they may get entrapped in this septae or entrapment neuropathies example crutch palsy that is a radial nerve palsy due to entrapment where it leaves the axilla in relation to major vessels nerve in close relation to vessels run risk of ligation or damage by the aneurysm pathology nerve degeneration the part of neuron distal to the point of injury undergoes valerian degeneration like when the nerve is fiber the when the nerve fiber is cut the distal segment of the axon which is severed from the cell body degenerates this is called valerian degeneration proximal part undergoes primary or retrograde degeneration for a single node the nerve regeneration axonal stump axonal stump means the, the site of injury where the nerve fiber is damaged therefore axonal stump from the proximal segment begins to grow distally that is uh, <clears throat> away from the nerve fiber if the endoneural tube within its schwann cells is intact at axonal sprout may readily pass along its primary course and reinnervate the end organ rate of recovery of axon is 1 mm per day 
If endoneural tube is interrupted, sprouts as many as 100 from one axonal stump. That is from the site of injury may migrate aimlessly throughout the damaged area into the epineural, perineural or adjacent tissue to form an end neuroma. An end neuroma, it is a benign neural tumors that commonly form after nerve transection. As we can see in the picture, the first picture shows that normal peripheral neuron the second picture shows the site of injury, valerian degeneration that is fragmentation of the distal axon and the Schwann cells proliferate along with the macrophages. Action. Neurofactors plays an important role in regeneration. In third, Schwann cells are lined up axonal sprouts embedded in various directions by, by nerve growth factors served axon may unite depends on intensity of injury may take several months for axons reunited after months if cut occurred in motor neuron denervation hypersensitivity very common as already said that if endoneural tube is interrupted the sprouts as many as 100 from one axonal stump may migrate aimlessly through the damaged area into epineural perineural or adjacent tissues to form an end neuroma or a neuroma in continuity. An end neuroma may form when the proximal end is widely separated from the distal end. A side neuroma indicates a partial nerve cut. Then mechanism of injury. Fractures and dislocations are the commonest cause of peripheral nerve injuries. Some of the mechanisms by which a nerve injury may be damaged are direct injury is cut or laceration, infection, leprosy, mechanically by compression, traction, friction and shock waves, ischemia that is Walkman's ischemia, then injections of tetracycline results in radial nerve palsy. Then classification, sudden classifications of nerve injuries, sudden classified nerve injuries into three types that is neuropraxia, axonotmesis, neurotmesis. <clears throat> neuropraxia, it is a physiological disruption conduction in the nerve fibers. There is no structural changes. The recovery occurs spontaneously within a few weeks, that is within six weeks and it is complete. Axonotmesis, the axons are damaged but the internal architectures of the nerve is preserved. That is valerian degeneration occurs. Recovery occurs spontaneously but may take many months. Complete recovery may not occur. Motor march can occur. Motor march, the muscle near the site of injury recovers first, followed by other as the nerve innervates muscles from proximal to distal. It is called motor march. And neurotmesis. The structure of a nerve is damaged by actual cutting or scarring of a segment. Valerian degeneration occurs. Spontaneous recovery is not possible and nerve repair is required. Diagnosis In a case of peripheral nerve injury, the following information should be obtained by careful history taking and examination. Like which nerve is affected? At what level is the nerve affected? What is the cause of the injury? What type of nerve injury? That is neuropraxia, axonotmesis or neurotmesis. In case of an old injury, is the nerve recovering or not? Then in history, a patient with a nerve injury commonly presents with complaints of inability to move the part of the limb, weakness and numbness of the injured part. The cause of the nerve injury may or may not be obvious. In case there is any obvious cause, say a penetrating wound along the course of a peripheral nerve, example, a cut by glass injury to the median nerve, the nerve affected and its level is easy to decide. Similarly, nerve injury may occur during an operation as a result of stretching or direct injury. When the cause is not obvious, an inquiry must be made regarding any history of injection in the proximity of the nerve. Neurotoxic drugs such as quinine and tetracycline are known to damage nerves. 
Medical causes of nerve affection like leprosy, diabetes should be considered in patients who do not give a history of injury. Then examination. Often clinical findings in a case of nerve palsy are very few. Therefore, it is essential to perform a systemic motor and sensory examination of the involved limb. As this, we should do both systemic and motor uh, both motor and sensory examination of the limb. The classic classical deformities may not be present in an early case or in a case with partial nerve injury. So there will be no deformities in case of early case or in a partial nerve injury. A combination of nerve injuries and anatomical variation in the nerve supply may distort the clinical picture of a classical nerve lesion. The following observation must be made during examination. Which nerve is affected? Attitude and deformity. Patients with some peripheral nerve injuries present with a classical attitude and deformity of the limb. Some such attitudes and different nerve injuries are as follows. Wrist to drop. The wrist remains in palmar flexion due to weakness of the dorsiflexors. It is seen in radial nerve palsy. Foot drop. The foot remains in plantar flexion due to weakness of the dorsiflexors. It occurs in common perineal nerve palsy. Winging of the scapula. The vertebral border of the scapula becomes prominent when the patient tries to push against a wall. It occurs in paralysis of the serratus anterior muscles in long thoracic nerve palsy. Claw hand or men and graphy. Claw hand means hyperextension at the metacarpophalangeal joints and flexion at the proximal and distal interphalangeal joints. This occurs due to paralysis of the lumbricals which flex the metacarpophalangeal joints and extend the interphalangeal joints. Paradoxically, clawing is more marked in low ulnar nerve palsy than in high ulnar nerve palsy. This is because in the later, that is in ulnar nerve palsy, flexors of the fingers, that is both profundus and superficialis, cause clawing effect are also paralyzed. In ulnar nerve palsy, only the medial two fingers develop clawing while all the four fingers develop clawing in combined median and ulnar nerve palsies. Clawing may not become apparent in the early post-injury period. And wasting of muscles. This will be obvious sometime. After the paralysis, it may be slight and become apparent only on comparing affected limb with the sound limb. Some examples are flat shoulder that is uh, muscle wasting of deltoid muscles nerve involved is axillary nerve thenar eminence thenar muscles median nerve hypothenar eminence nerve involved is ulnar nerve hollowing between metacarpals again ulnar nerve is involved thigh wasting quadriceps muscles femoral nerve calf wasting gastrosoleus muscles involvement of sciatic nerve now we'll see about the sensory examination. The different forms of sensation to be tested in a suspected case of nerve palsy are touch, pain, temperature and vibration. The area of sensory loss may be smaller than expected. It is so, look for sensation in the autonomous zone. Then check for the reflexes. Reflexes in the area of nerve distribution are absent in case of peripheral nerve injuries. Then sweat test. It is a test to detect sympathetic function in skin supplied by a nerve. Sympathetic fibers are amongst the most resistant to mechanical trauma. The presence of setting within an autonomous zone of an injured peripheral nerve reassures the examiner that complete interruption of the nerve has not occurred. Hence, if there is sweating, there is no complete interruption of the nerve or the complete and there is no damage of complete nerve only the partial there is partial nerve injury sweating can be determined by the star test or ninhydrin print test in this test the extremities is dusted with an agent that changes color on coming in contact with the sweat we'll go for motor examination for evaluation of motor functions clear concepts about the anatomy as to which nerve supplies which muscle is essential the muscles which are exclusively supplied by a particular nerve are more suitable for motor examination. The tests are nothing but maneuvers to make a muscle contract. 
one must carefully watch for trick movements the movements produced by the adjacent muscles often substituting for the paralyzed muscle the contraction of the muscle must be appreciated wherever possible by feeling its belly or its tendon getting taut motor examination conducted for different nerve is discussed below and treatment of the injured now and the nerve is injured we should see that is the nature of lesion known if s yes, then we should see what is it is it nerve in continuity or nerve not in continuity if there is nerve in continuity wait for 3 weeks then examine for a return of activity if recovery occurs then follow up every 1 to 3 months there will be progressive recovery or no progress if there is progressive recovery then it goes to full recovery if there is no progress do some electrical studies then then when there is examination for return of activity if there is no recovery do electrical studies like emg fibs psw no vmp ncv it is no motor or sensory and emg fibs and psw number of vmps and emg no fibs or psw vmp will be absent in ncv motor and sensory conduction above and below the block normal in emg no fibs or psw no vmp unless patient is tickled ncv normal in case of emg fibs psw and no vmp should explore and surgically repair the nerve in case of emg that is electromyography if fibs and psw and number of vmps then ex then we should expect for further return of the recovery of the nerve in uh, electromyography if there is no fibs or psw and vmp is absent then if there is reco uh, full recovery can occur and in case of emg when there is no fibs or psw and no vmp unless patient is tickled then ncv is also normal then patient is normal and there is no nerve injury in this emg means electromyography ncv means nerve conduction velocity fibs means fibrillation potentials PSW positive sharp waves and VMPs voluntary motor potentials. Then prognosis: the following factors dictate recovery following a nerve repair. That is age. If the the lower the age, the better the prognosis. Tension at the sutural lines: the more the tension, the poorer is the prognosis. Time since injury: after eighteen months, only sensory functions can be expected. location of the injury the more the proximal the injury the worse the prognosis type of nerve a primarily motor nerve like radial nerve has a better prognosis than a mixed nerve condition of the nerve ends the more the crushing and infection the poorer the prognosis associated conditions are like infection ischemia etc which indicates poor prognosis so that's all for today's lecture thank you